All right, hey everyone, WonderBots here, and welcome back to Fate Tactics. It's, it's been a little while. Been a little while. Mainly, we had too many series that involved both of us going on at the same time, and it, there was just kind of a zero chance that we we're actually going to be able to fit it all in. So instead, uh, let's see. Requires Arwantis. Uh, let's see. I'm a, that should be okay. We'll see how this goes. Oh, interesting. Stone Gardens. So now we're back and we're going to be alternating this series with Spirit Fair, at least for a little while, just so that we can keep up with both series and not overtax ourselves too much. The Gorgon's Lair. Ooh. Turn back, little witch. You are not welcome here. I just want to talk. I'm here to... The sisters know why you are here. The sisters know all that happens in this land. You want to know what the sisters know. However, you have nothing of value. Value? Money? Do they want me to pay them? What good would money do out here? The sisters deal in information, and you have nothing they want. So leave. Wait! How can they know whether or not I know something they don't want? No, they don't know. Oh, that they don't... Yeah, that they don't know something that she has. Yeah. Hmm. 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 Just leave. We won't be going anywhere without answers. Then you shall find your answers in the afterlife. Some of these songs sound like a conga line party. So, four wind, three earth, and some fire. Some fire. And water. Let's go against wind again. It's been a while. It looks like it's earth. Er earth is good against wind and electricity. But fire is good against earth and ice. Oh yeah, there's one water as well. So, I mean, it's good to have probably a, what, a fire on hand to defeat all the earth ones. Yeah. So There's mainly only we the want... one water, and it's a defensive creature, so it probably won't attack too often. Well, we've got earth. We've got electricity. So bring the fire boys. Okay, it's been a little while. Oh, and we have the fire boys lined up. Mm-hmm. Ah, uh, this will work out. mean the fire out. spirits. They're the boys. <laughs> I don't know, I've just been... Uh, oh, it, speaking of Gorgons. Yes. I suppose we... Watched Clash of the Titans last <laughs> night. Yeah, I had seen the old... What was it? 70s or 80s? One? I think. I think that's the year it was made. But I saw the old one. And I was like, hey, there was that newer one that had come out some years ago, and it even had a sequel. And it had, what, Sam Worthington, Liam Neeson, Ralph Fiennes? Fiennes? And a couple, bunch of other actors, actually, that we were familiar with. And it was super weird watching it because it was like, we, we recognize, recognize that, that person. Guy. We recognize this person. And some of those people, I wonder if they were already well known or if it was before. Uh, they, like Holt, though, he was just the young sheepish shoulder soldier. Like you would think, he's had a lot better roles since. Yeah, you uh, know. I know a number of them were kind of like A minus list actors or like B list actors. Um. And of course, they got that guy who was, uh, oh, the monk from Dragonheart 
as the father at the very beginning. Yeah. Even even the fish like yeah, the fisherman's wife was also from Downton Abbey. She was the mother hmm. in the Downton Abbey family. So it's like they practically everyone I recognized from somewhere. I wish to some degree more movies had new actors. Yeah. I like that because then you see the character as the character rather than as the actor playing the character. Mm-hmm. Because don't you hate it how you see a Tom Cruise movie pop up and you go, oh, it's Tom, it's Tom Cruise. Cruise. There are some actors that have a substantial range. Yeah. Where it also depends on if they ever get into makeup or really change their appearance. Like Jim Carrey, for instance, he takes on a lot of roles where he undergoes makeup and stuff. Yeah. Like the Grinch. And I suppose at the latter part of Sonic, though we still haven't seen it. Yeah, I'm looking forward to that whenever we do decide to... Just to see how they... I mean, they went through the effort of changing up Sonic's design because otherwise he would have looked terrible. He looked pretty bad, yeah. Oh, gosh. You would think that... I, I know that they want to usually keep things under wraps, but don't they... Didn't in the past they, they used to do these... I wouldn't necessarily call them like pre-showings and stuff, but in the development stage, especially for characters that have to be CG animated, especially for a beloved character that's been around for ages, you would think that they might show a couple of their drawings or renditions to some kids and be like, hey, which Sonic do you like more? And I guarantee most of them would have chosen the one that was closer to the original mm -hmm. design. Yeah. And yeah, they, they probably wanted to avoid having the mono eye thing that he has going on. The thing is, and like, they did avoid it. A lot of this could have been easily avoided if they had had like a better art director. Mm. My my general assumption with a lot of these movies that went bad is that they didn't, like you said, they didn't have much for focus groups. Um, and equally likely to some degree, in my head. Uh, it's probably like one person in charge that's just like I'm. This is how it's going to be. Mm -hmm. And that I've, is. I've noticed that they've done that often with directors. Yeah. They just hire a director and they're like, "Hey, here's a beloved franchise that people have loved for 40 years. Have fun with it." Uh, but they control everything. The actor's input doesn't matter to them. The yeah, the designer's input doesn't at matter to them. It, I don't know. I, I feel like movies are such a collaborative effort that you need tons of oversight and multiple heads in the game to to make it come together in a way that's good. That's not what I wanted to do. Oh, what? Which is I cursed. mean, I guess it's fine. Hmm. Which is curse is still useful. The other thing, though, is I just hate the trend of making classic, beloved 2D things into 3D and live action. Because there are some that can translate, and there are others that should just remain 2D. I, I worry that at some point 2D animation is going to be a lost art. And no one will know how to do it anymore. You know? Yeah, I mm, hmm. I don't I don't think that's an issue. Like it won't fade away entirely, but I'm talking about when you see the have you old seen, hand drawn have Disney. Have you seen movies. like the new Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles though? Oh yeah, like, but that's the thing. There, like, there's I'm, still some. I, I'm gonna say TV straight stuff. up that I think American television, uh, or like American cartoons, are going to keep some of it alive. But I'm talking much about. Of it alive. I'm talking about though things that will become full length feature films. Are the but then again, we are starting to see a trend towards television shows anyway, even with live action. People don't 
like going to the movie theaters to see a two hour long movie. They like the 10 episode mini series that might have the possibility for a second and third season. Yeah. With each episode being almost an hour long. Not to mention a lot of television is kind of vapid. Or not television movies are kind of vapid. Mm-hmm. Vapid in what way? Uh, they're short. They're they're made to be kind of quick and digestible. Um, and popular. They're they're shooting for the box office ap- appeal. Mm-hmm. And that's not necessarily the best. And with the current times, there might not even be yeah. a box office. Like anymore. how many movies have we seen where it's just like if they had more time, they could have actually made something pretty decent with this. Oh, tons. I I think the problem is. With so many movies, you know how they have on DVDs the extra features of extra cutscenes and stuff that, well, actually, they w- they would just be cuts, like cut scenes, deleted scenes, you know? Mm-hmm. And how there's actually a number of them where you say, wow, this two to three minute cutscene really brought some depth to this character. Maybe it was a quiet moment where maybe it was a moment where two characters were discussing something. But it slows down the pace, it allows room to breathe, and it also provides you with more character development. And you know what I'm getting at? Yeah. But those often are the moments that are cut first. And I feel that that's a mistake. I mean, one of my most hated movies of all times is uh, Bicentennial Man. Um, because they cut all of those. You mean everything that was in the trailer? Yeah, like everything that was in the trailer, but everything that was fun about the movie. I think they marketed it wrong. It Well, it was supposed to be a Robin Williams comedy based on the marketing. And he was funny for a bit when he was a robot learning how to be human, but then... Quite a portion of the movie is him struggling with being a robot that looks like a human. Yeah. And I mean, even then, they cut out most of the humor bits mm-hmm. while he was, you know, the initial, like, he is a robot. Um. Nope. And I think people have caught that in modern trailers where. They either use the best scenes, or they use scenes that were in the film, but then were cut. And, like, I hate that. Mm -hmm. Because it feels so tacky. Yeah, things very well might just trend towards television series as opposed to movies anyway. And also, think about it. Movies cost usually hundreds of millions of dollars to make, depending on what kind of genre they are and their budget. And part of that is what actors they hire, uh, the special effects, the costuming, the locales. But it's interesting to see how television can accomplish almost as much as movies now. Yeah. I I think 3D animation and whatnot has helped out fairly immensely. Mm-hmm. And I think... At least to being able to expand the genre of television shows. Most television shows in the past used to be modern. I, I think modern also the distribution stuff. platform mm-hmm. that... Up until now, monetizing television shows has always been difficult. Because you had to get a slot on a station, and you had to have advertisers Mm -hmm. want to advertise. I think that's what, in part, killed Firefly, right? Yeah. Fox kept kept putting it to a later and later time slot. Well, not just that. They were, were like, actively screwing with it because they knew... Uh, they didn't like it for whatever reason, and so they would, like, delay it. They would change what its... What its scheduled time was. Yeah, and so... Of course, viewership dropped off. Yeah, of course, because it wasn't a consistent slot. There were breaks. It was out of order. Mm. 
Uh, if I remember right, that Wait, was one what? of the big issues. Yeah. They they put out an episode. Multiple, like. How do you put out something in the wrong order? Because they didn't like it. Uh, gosh. Oh, you don't need to look it yeah, up. Yeah, I want to look it up just because the history of Firefly is so tragic. Because it was one of those shows that could have been if great. Yeah. If anybody else had been publishing it, it would have been top tier, and everybody would have at least loved it enough. Has a cult following still, though. Oh, this is one of the Medusas. Actually, look at the them. Gorgons. Oh, well, well, Gorgons, yes. But it's interesting. They still have legs, but they do have little reptilian tails in the back. I find it interesting that their snakes are kind of like you know blonde brunette. I wonder what the last one is going to be of the sisters. I'm pretty sure they're not wearing anything on their torsos. Yeah. <laughs> Fair enough. I mean, they're pixels, I suppose. The game yep. can get away with that. I mean, we've seen a lot of naked fairies mm -hmm. throughout this game. Or maybe they've got like a bando bra thing going on. I don't know. I in any case. You humans don't listen, do you? We warned you. We just want to ask you a question. Oh, this is actually Medusa herself. We have no answers for you. Leave. We don't have time for this. You will answer us now. Was that a threat? Girls, it's time to add more statues to our collection. Well, gallery. I just like saying the whole collection bit because... It's just such a villain thing to say. Mm-hmm. Wait! What do you want in return? Hmm. What? You only trade information for something of value, right? That's what the harpy said when we came here. I must have something that you want. Oh, well then. <laughs> That thing on your head. What is it? Huh? Oh! My earmuffs? Yes. That. I want it. Uh-oh. Mom's gonna have an issue with that. I... 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 I can't give you them. Why not? My, my mama made these for me, and I would probably die without them. Now you're just being dramatic. Fine. I'll just take them from you after you're dead. It's a little weird because we might, you know, normally you might not have recruited, uh... Mom before this point? Yeah. You would have thought she would have interjected with a... Yeah, I wish they had had bonus them. dialogue for that. Mm-hmm. Because it's a little weird otherwise. Yeah, but she has to wear the earmuffs to keep the voices out of her head. What was it voices? I think she heard something. Yeah, she could hear things. Like these murmurings, and they'd make her. It just looked like it was explode. shadow power. Mm-hmm. I, I don't know. Okay. Uh, let's see. Well, uh, imagine fire, if. Fire, nature, oh. arcane. Oh, yeah. Arcane, earth. Yeah, so it's a lot of arcane, a lot of earth. Was it electricity on the right with fire? Or? Yeah, electric and fire. So nature's good against electricity. We've got fire covered. Yeah, okay, so we, we've got a decent setup for this. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, you need electricity for arcane. Oh. Ah, defense of a single unit. Mm-hmm. Uh, this is nothing I want to change here. Oh, boy, that's a lot of mushrooms. Yep, you might want to avoid those. 
Hopefully my phoenixes can get up those pillars. Because I need to get up there if I want to get um, that treasure. I don't think it's a big deal if I miss out, but... What level is everybody? Okay, they're all level 37. Acid Rain Talisman. I don't know if the hair colors are going to be a Charlie's Angels reference. Oh. You know those, or those classic girl groups where there was always the blonde, the brunette, the redhead? Mm-hmm. been a lot of references in this game, but I believe the names that they're using are the ones that were associated with the Gorgons. Yeah. Oh. Arc Pangolin. Yeah, they are. They are Pangolins. They're cute. They need more statues around here. Because I just see a gremlin, some kind of person? Yeah, I don't know what that other thing is. Yeah, they don't have much. And then they have the really big head. Oh, there's a bird sitting above a fountain. Oh, yeah, you're right. Then there's that face, but I don't know if that is just a carving or if that actually was something. So I'm just going to gang up in this Gorgon. It seems like the rest of them are just kind of content to hang out and wait until I get close to them. Maybe if I went straight up the center, it would be more of an issue. Kind of ironic that we're just going to kill Medusa first. <laughs> yeah. She's not even that tough. Yeah, they're just boosting each other, aren't they? Yep. Which is kind of dangerous in its own right. Now, it's interesting. They've blindfolded themselves so that they can't instantly turn you into stone. Correct. But why would they do that? Them. Yeah, it is. check. That must be awkward. I think their pants are made in such a way that they don't even have a strap holding them up above the, like, around the tail or anything. Oh, yeah. It just must be weird to have tails in general. It would certainly be inconvenient. Oh yeah, I, I can't imagine having a tail. Like, they look cool on, you know, various fantasy races and video games and such. But the way that we're sitting right now, mm -hmm. we would be, you know, crushing our tailbones. And they'd either have to... Yeah, I... I don't know. It's like having horns, too. I love fantasy races that have horns, you know, fawns, various kind of like demon king like kin, like tieflings and such. And it's interesting because you think about some of the horn configurations and you go, how do they sleep at night? 
do they have to, depending on where the horns are going, they would just have to lie down with their face perfectly, you know, facing the ceiling, or maybe they couldn't sleep on their sides because of the curling horns. How do they get close to one another without smacking each other in the face with horns? Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. You could even potentially injure yourself with your own horns. Uh, we were playing a game where there was a walrus in it, and I was just looking up walruses. And some of the walruses' tusks grew to be so long that if they tilted their head forward, they could jab themselves in their stomach. Yep. Do you know what I mean? I think just how inconvenient having something so stationary is. You know what I mean? Yeah. And granted, a tail could be flexible. But they're not really in a convenient spot for sitting. We would either have to have open back chairs all the time. Oh, but I just, ew, I, I can't imagine the whole pants business. Because then you would have to have these holes that are perfectly tailored, or you'd have to have some kind of ribbon or something to tie around it at the top. I don't know, it's just... Tell me more about this pants business. Hmm? <laughs> just... The wording on pants business was just super amusing to the me. The pants business. But in case, glad we don't have tails. Glad we don't have horns. If we want them, we can make them as costume props. Though, outside of a convention or a renaissance festival or Halloween or something, it not a whole lot of isn't very yeah. fashionable in the day to day. I have some people go around with cat ears and tails. Not I think horns, maybe though. when we're older, we'll see that sort of thing a little bit more often. Mm -hmm. oh. Cause I think at this point, most casual clothes is as basic as you could potentially get. If you understand what I mean? Yeah. Not too many seams, not too many embellishments. Maybe you have something printed on the front. Maybe particular pants have different cuts or pockets. But... They're really I, just wailing on peony here. Ouch. If people wanted to be really basic, wouldn't people just be wearing loose-fitting one-piece suits? Except there's an inconvenience to having a one-piece suit because then you have to take the whole thing off in order to go to the bathroom. Mm -hmm. I think that's why having separate tops and bottoms has just been convenient. Stop bullying peony. Now, are they getting poisoned by the mushrooms? Uh, haunted. Haunted, okay. Oh, she turned mom into stone? It's a very temporary thing. Well, thank goodness it's temporary. Imagine if it was permanent. I used to play in Baldur's Gate. If I remember right, it was de facto permanent, and it was brutal. Did you have party members they had to worry about? Yeah. Ah. Oh. It was really annoying. Oh, are you down? Peony is down, yeah. But with the other two, okay. Well, unfortunately, Peony just died because they just... Ah. And if she backs off... I... 
Mm. I don't have a whole lot of hope at this point. Also, oh, that's your hiding salamander. Yeah. Un unfortunately. What are you going to need different? A different party composition, a different strategy. What were you, what were you lacking? Damage. Spells? Honestly. Maybe you should look at your cards then too. 